So last week we did the catch up from my visit to Casa Grande, Arizona. This week we're going to talk about what the project actually entailed. So we did cover some of that briefly in last week's video. This week we're actually going to go through each of the components that made up the project that I was doing for my customers. So check this out. All right, everybody, welcome back. I hope that you had a little bit of fun with, uh, with the videos and images there. Now, let's talk about what we we're actually doing down in Casa Grande. So number one, I work with a chain of RV resorts and I also work with independent RV parks. We started doing that in 2014. We started working with RV parks and resorts and other customers for simple website building, website tutorials, and building sites that people could maintain and control themselves. We found some mistakes in that business model and we've since corrected it, but we have several customers who do most of their own updates and they actually do their own layouts. This particular RV park chain actually has park managers that work on their websites on a regular basis. So when they need extra help, they contact us and we do some of the heavy lifting. We do imaging for them, um, we do new home sales for them, and um, now we're starting to do video for them as well. So when I give you the web addresses, keep in mind these aren't high-end examples of websites that we build today. Um, these are websites that we built several years ago, and these particular parks like maintaining the sites. So I'm not throwing myself or the parks under the bus. What I'm saying here is when it comes to the design and layout, that's really not my responsibility anymore. That's the park managers. So how the sites are laid out when you take a look at them um, isn't the optimal layout settings that I would go with. Uh, the fonts that are used aren't my favorite fonts, but these are decisions made by the park owners and their park management. So what we had to do for them uh, in February was we had one single project and that was Fairways, which is a 55 plus gated community. And they're right up the road from another one of the properties called Sundance One. Now, Sundance One is expanding. They're actually creating a whole new segment of the resort called Sundance Two. Hey, pretty original, right? So Sundance Two is actually doing larger manufactured homes as part of the resort community. And we wanted to show those new homes off. So we did a lot of photography work for them and we did some video work for them. So Sundance had several videos created during the time that I was down there. And that was terrestrial video as well as aerial video and aerial photography. Now Fairways, which was the primary project, Fairways is a much smaller community located just up the road from Sundance. Um, members of Fairways, have access to Sundance 1, Sundance 2, and all the amenities there. Plus they have their own amenities at their park. Now, this was a very simple website to begin with. The park manager had actually created her own website years ago, but she wanted to be able to do some new things and she saw some things on Sundance and the other properties that she wanted to be able to do with her website for Fairways. So project number one, the biggest part, was actually just rebuilding a simple website for Fairways with WordPress and the X theme. Now I actually have a class about WordPress and the X theme over on Udemy and I'll leave a link in the show notes below for you because you can build some pretty stylized websites very easily using WordPress and X theme as well as a lot of other themes out there. All right, let's get back to talking about the project. So. Fairways got in touch. They said they wanted to build a new website. They wanted to keep it very simple. They didn't want a highly complicated website. And mostly the park manager would be dealing with the website afterward. One of the primary things that she was interested in is listing homes for sale because they have like nine or 10 homes currently available in the community. They're not expanding. Um, they're as big as they're gonna get. And they're right next to a golf course, hence the name Fairways. So. A big part of the project was actually meeting with the park manager, sitting down with her 
and making some decisions about the layout and design that she wanted and she wanted to keep it consistent with several of the other parks so that's one thing we did and what we've got up on screen is actually showing off so here's fairways welcome to fairways what do they have to offer there's one of the new videos that we did and they wanted their resort map on here and then they've got their new homes for sale section so like i said very simple site so we did a lot of photographic work for them we also took some of their own photography and ported it over to the new site and a couple of simple ways to get in touch and finally also a new events calendar because these communities um, do have a lot of events going on so these 55 plus gated communities as jody put it one time uh, regarding Sundance, it's like Disneyland for seniors. And it really is because of some of the things they have going on, which we'll see later in the video here. So there we go with all these crazy events that go throughout the year. So in addition to doing the new Fairways website, while we were down there, I actually parked the Airstream at Sundance because they're an RV park and resort. So Sundance One has RV sites and Sundance One also has single wide manufactured homes. So they resell homes, they put new homes in, they have RV sites, so they really cover the gamut of a lot of things. Just to let you know, there are a lot of these types of resorts and parks in Southern Arizona, and a lot of folks who are snowbirds coming down from the colder climates like to come down to Arizona to overwinter. And a lot of these resorts and parks have some pretty amazing amenities. Sundance is no exception. I think one of their most amazing amenities that you're seeing in this is the um, they've got a radio controlled car racetrack. I'm not I'm not making a joke here. Um, and let me tell you, there are a lot of residents of the community that come out and participate and race their radio controlled cars. It's pretty amazing. So in addition to that, Sundance One has their main amenities area at their clubhouse. So they've got an amazing indoor outdoor pool area so even when the weather's bad they have an indoor part of the pool area um, they've got their hot tubs they've got their billiards rooms they've got craft and hobby rooms they've got that radio controlled cart racetrack shuffleboard um, pickleball they, they've got it all now with the growth and expansion to Sundance 2 that they're doing with the new manufactured homes going into Sundance 2 which are much larger than the other smaller park models um, they've added another swimming pool area and hot tub out of what they call the sports complex. So that's um, all of these amenities are shared between both locations. And what's really interesting is the folks right up the road at Fairways, not even a five minute drive, they have access to all these amenities too. So the job for, um, for the start of February, what was it? Number one, it was website work, just deploying a new simple website and then doing training with the park manager and giving her uh, several of my online classes to watch and learn from so that she can do a lot of her own maintenance with the websites. Uh, job number two was new photography for Fairways, Sundance, and Sundance 2. So Sundance was uh, new photography around the existing park. Sundance 2 was interiors, exteriors, and aerial video and photography for Sundance 2, the expansion. So we had web work going on, we had photography work going on, and we had drone work going on. I would say that the primary purpose of this particular contract was the website work for Fairways. So once, um, once that was completed, when I did have free time and it wasn't raining and it wasn't being miserable, I was getting as many images for my clients as possible for both of the 55 plus resort communities. So as you take a look at both of the websites and the images and the website layouts, keep in mind, once again, um, mostly uh, most of the layouts that you see, I'm actually not responsible for. That's the park managers generating the um, layouts and it's the layouts that they like and they've been keeping consistent among all their parks in total 14 parks right now. And they've also asked me to help out with a new park up in the Las Vegas area, so that might be a new project in the near future that I can actually bring you along with me on. So these are very simple, very straightforward websites, 
And one of the primary parts of the websites, when we were looking at this, I'm just scrolling down through, taking a look at the site. This is for Sundance 1 and Sundance 2. But one of the primary things is their homes for sale. They have new resort homes, pre-owned park model listings. And I do spend a good bit of time updating their pre-owned park models listings for them. So I regularly go in and post new homes for sale and sold homes. And that's what we're taking a look at right here. And you see there's a lot of sold this winter. So I need to talk to the sales manager and have him remove some of these solds because it's getting too cluttered. Uh, bottom line though, even though these are very simple websites that aren't highly stylized, they're incredibly effective. Since we've been working with these clients from 2015, so four years now, they've seen massive growth on the website use. Um, so we're into the tens of thousands of people per year looking at the site. And they're making a lot of their sales based on the website. So people come across the new and used homes for sale and they make purchasing decisions. So those are the jobs of a website. So it doesn't have to be the flashiest website in the world. I would, every time I work on these sites, I would really love to go do some more improvements, some changes to formatting, some changes to layout. But as I said before, the staff already has control of this and the layout is working from their, their perspective. So we go with it. So the primary thing was of course, fairways. And then secondary was new images around Sundance and Sundance 2 and a lot of new interiors for the whole new expansion side and some video of that as well. So while I was there, I was employing my MacBook Pro to do the web work and also my image editing and video editing. So we had the Canon 5D Mark II, the Canon 7D, um, this little Sony A5100 right here, also the iPhones, um, and Osmo Mobile 2 for some of the interior work of the new homes. And uh, of course, the Mavic Pro and the Mavic Pro 2. So the Mavic Pro was used to make a new map of Sundance 2 and their expansion area. And the um, Mavic 2 Pro was used for a lot of the video that you'll be seeing in upcoming episodes here. So there it is in a nutshell. What was I doing out there? I was doing web work first and foremost. I was doing training. That was the second part of it. Third part of it was new imaging and new aerial video. And we kept it all very simple per my customer's requests. So we didn't go on these amazing cinematic tours with the drones. We gave people a very nice overview of the amenities that were in each of the resort locations and what people can expect when they get there. So we kept it very realistic and there wasn't a lot of heavy editing or anything either because we really want to show off what the place looks like. Of course, on those bad weather days, we didn't show anything off. All right, so in the next episode, in, in the next video, I think we're going to talk a little bit more about autonomous drone flight versus manual control drone flight where I see things going in the industry personally, because I've, I've got some suspicions where the industry is going and I want to talk to you about that. We can use this project and other projects to, um, to use as our launching pad, but I think down the road more and more, we're going to see more and more autonomous flight. And while I was doing the work down here, uh, down in Casa Grande, there was a lot of autonomous drone flight. I'd say there's 25% manual drone flight and 75% using third-party applications to do autonomous flight um, with pre-programmed routes for both maps and some other more cinematic uh, video. So we're going to start talking about that and we're going to pull these things together as you might be planning your own drone business as well. Um, you might have to add some additional services together to get things rolling for you as we have. So. We're web work, we're photography, and we're also drone work now. And we'd like to evolve more toward the drone work side, but doing these types of packages also works out. And in the end, it pays the bills and I do enjoy it. So, and that's another big thing. Um, whatever you're doing with your small business, you gotta enjoy it if you're gonna do it because doing your own small business is an absolute ton of work. All right, everyone, thanks for tuning in again. And on the next video, we're going to be talking about some more mechanics and um, getting more into the tech side.